Plato, the famous Greek philosopher, had the following to say about numbers. He said the most important and first study is of numbers themselves. This study must begin with the whole origin of the odd and the even, and the greatness of their influence on the nature of reality. He said there are four even numbers that have no center. They have a zero in their center and they are female in nature. He said that the five odd numbers which all have a center are male in nature. If you have a look at the complete set of integers from minus infinity to plus infinity, you will see that the center number is zero. This means that four is connected to number because the four even numbers have no center or a zero in their center. This method of approaching odd and even numbers suggests that numbers come from the center. For the odd numbers, there is a one in the center. For the even numbers, there is a zero in the center. This indicates that 10 numbers come from the center and that these 10 numbers are female in nature. We can also conclude that 4 is the number of the center, as numbers come from a center, and 4 means number. The fact that 4 or number is connected to 0 is found in many sacred stories, in the sense that 4 is connected to the wilderness or to emptiness. In Greek, the fourth book of the Bible is the book of Numbers. In Hebrew, the fourth book of the Bible is Midbar, and it means wilderness, wasteland, or emptiness. This connects four to the number zero. The Israelites were also numbered in the desert, or the wasteland, in the fourth book. Zero, as a separate symbol, was first encountered in India, about 500 BC. It was found inscribed on the wall of a temple. Its primary purpose was for counting. Counting as number per se. This again ties up number in the context of four and counting with zero. The Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years. Jesus fasted in the wilderness for 40 days. So there is consistency in the sacred stories of the connection be between 4 or 40 to the number 0 or emptiness. As all things are unified, let us link the idea of counting to unity. Unity is initially connected to a difference of 1. The second stage of unity is negation, which undoes the negative. In terms of counting, this means that counting is only meaningful in terms of not counting. This means that we must not count one unit. By not counting this one unit, we are in essence implementing the two aspects of unity, negation by not counting and minus one by not counting one unit. As numbers come from a center, it makes perfect sense that in the context of unity, we do not count the unit in the center. We are now in a position to calculate the number of a cube. Arrange a number of cubes to form a larger cube, but there must be a cube in the center. We can arrange eight cubes in the shape of a cube, but there is no cube in the center. But 27 cubes, arranged as a larger cube, does have a cube in the center. We have seen that there are 10 numbers coming out of a center, where 10 comes from a combination of 1 and 0, the 5 odd numbers having a 1 in the center and the four even numbers having a zero in the center. In the case of the 27 cubes, 
there is a cube in the center, but don't count it. In this way, we combine 1 and 0 at the center and describe the process of 10 numbers coming from a center. Therefore, the number of a cube on a universal level is 26, which is 27 less the one cube in the center, which we did not count. Now we will calculate the number of the circle and the number of the square. These are common and very powerful geometric components, so their numbers are important in helping us gain knowledge of them. It is a well-known fact that exactly six circles fit perfectly around a central seventh circle. The overall shape of a circle is also maintained. Using the process of unity we have just described, we do not count the circle in the center. The conclusion is that the number of a circle is 6. Let us now apply this process to a square. We need to construct more than a single square in such a way that the overall shape of a square is maintained. Four squares can be arranged to form a larger square, but the process of unity requires a square in the center, which four squares do not have. Nine squares can be arranged to maintain the overall shape of a square. There is also a square in the center. Using the process prescribed by unity, we do not count the square in the center. Therefore, the number of a square is eight. In this section, we have arrived at the numbers of the square in the circle and the cube. As you can well understand, this will have important ramifications in our search for the knowledge of the oneness of all things. Another very basic and important geometric element is the right angle triangle. If we break the right angle triangle down into its components, we get two elements. The first is the diagonal, which is also the diameter of the circumscribed circle. There is also a right angle. We have already seen that the number of the circle is 6. From this we can deduce that the number of the diameter is 5. The diameter is also the diagonal of the right angle triangle. From this we can deduce that the totality of the right angle triangle is the number 4. We have also discussed that 4 is the number of the center. There is only one configuration of the right angle triangle that has a center number. That is the 3, 4, 5 right angle triangle. Here we see the center number is 4. This is again suggesting that 4 is the number of the right angle triangle. There is another property of the right angle triangle that we need to familiarize ourselves with. Draw a right angle triangle A, B, C. Draw BD at right angles to AC. Using simple geometry and trigonometry, we find that DC equals 1 upon AC, or DC and AC are reciprocals of each other. This tells us that the right angled triangle, as well as the number 4, are associated with the mathematical property of reciprocal. This is another central idea that will play a crucial role in the unfolding of unity.